All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching the word of truth and sincerity. Salutations to my fellow Akim and the whole four elect, pushing the same word of truth and sincerity in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, I just want to do a quick video on this article that you see right here in front of you. It's off of CNN uh, News or CNN.com. And if you go into the politics section, it says U U.S. military prepares for the next frontier space war. It says, uh, since man first explored space, it has been a largely peaceful environment. But now U.S. adversaries are deploying weapons beyond Earth's atmosphere, leading the U.S. military to prepare for frightening for the frightening prospect of war in space. And if you understand anything about the scriptures, uh, and the scriptures speak expressively about you know uh, Esau coming up against the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Shai, with the war in heaven. We're gonna get that, but um, you know these devils, you know they're preparing for war, and it's not for each other. They claim it's for each other. But it's really for the fight against Yahweh Shai, all right? And it says, as humans go out, as humans go out there, there has always been conflict, conflict in the Wild West. As we moved in the West, conflict twice in Europe for its horrible war, world wars. General John Hayton, head of the head of U.S. Strategic Command, told CNN, "So every time humans actually physically move into that, there's conflict." And in that case, we'll have to be prepared for that. Now, when they say humans, remember, they're not talking about Jake's. They're talking about Esau. When, whenever you hear these Edomites try to refer to humans moving into space, the only people that's moving into space that have the finances to move into space are these Edomites. And they allow these other heathen nations around the bottom, such as Japan and China, to move out there. You know, maybe India. But it's really these Edomites, man. So with, instead of saying human, it just says, as Edomites go out there, there has always been conflict. Because wherever Esau goes, he brings conflict, even to space. Why do you think there's so much trash in the space, man? That's not because of Jake's. It's not because of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It's because of Esau. Space trash, his shit, literal shit, floating, floating in the atmosphere, you know? So reading on, it says... uh. Uh, as humans, i.e. Edomites, go out there, there has always been conflict. Conflict in the Wild West. As we move in the West, conflict twice in Europe for its horrible world wars. General John Hayton, head of U.S. Strategic Command, told CNN, so every time humans actually physically move into, their, uh, move into that, there's conflict. And in that case, we'll have to be prepared for that. Today, the U.S. depends on space more than any other nation. In a nightmare scenario, as adversaries launch a massive cyber attack on key infrastructures and disable and destroy our satellites in space, television would go blank, mobile net networks silent, and the internet would slow and then stop. Now, there's a uh, there's a uh, a cartoon there's a cartoon called uh, what is it called? Oh, Legends of uh, Chamberlain Heights, all right, and it comes on a comedy channel. Now, uh, there's an episode of that uh, show called uh, "The End of the World," man, and it's basically the internet goes down because of a so-called uh, Bill Cosby sex tape, and the internet goes down, and uh, it's it just pandemonium all over the place. And what happens? The cell phones, uh, the cell phones. And the cell phones slow down, and basically all the networks crash, man. And it's just pandemonium. You know what I mean? So this is not far fetched. It says, dependent on the timestamps from GPS satellites, everything from stock markets to bank transactions to traffic lights and railroad switches would freeze. Airline pilots would lose con uh, contact with the ground, unsure, unsure of their position, and without weather data. To steer around storms, you know, world leaders couldn't communicate across the continents. The U.S. military pilots would lose contact with armed drones over the Middle East. Smart bombs would become dumb missiles, would sit immobile in their silos, which that's not going to happen. They're going to come up out of them silos, 
the U.S. could lose early warning of nuclear attacks for parts of the earth. So the reason why I wanted to bring this article up, because this is all spoken about in the scriptures. When you read Revelations 12 and 7, it says this, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. Now, Michael and his archangels are the heavenly host of the Most High. You know, Michael being an archangel, you know, and him leading the uh, military forces of Yahweh Shemuel Shai down here on earth to do war with Esau, Satan, the adversary, with his angels, with your U.S. Air Force, your NATO Air Force, okay? All this is spoken about in the scriptures, okay? You know, you see Esau, he's he's mounted up to heaven as an eagle with wings, you know? And so that's what the Lord said in Obadiah 1 and 4, though thou exalt thyself as an eagle, though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, then will I bring thee down, saith the Lord, Yahweh. When he when did he initially set his nest upon the stars? Well, he did that in 1969, you know, with his with the beginning of his space program. And it says nest. Uh, it goes back to the Hebrew word kan, uh, kwan, salafi kwan. Let me see. It says uh, the primitive to is, is kwanan, kwanan which is primitive root to erect, but used only as uh, denominative from the nesting, i.e. build or occupy. And what, have you, what has Esau built and occupied in space? Uh, uh, what has he built and occupied in space? Uh, the space station, you know, and the satellites. So I'm just looking up that word nest. Let me go to etymology. That word nest, okay. Uh, uh, it's not. Uh, so basically the same thing. Build, build a nest. But I know the Apostle Gabor had brought it out a while ago. That really what that's speaking about is Esau's sister, uh weapons, man. You know his weapons on high, man. And they speak about some of those weapons in this article, which are with satellites, you know, uh, uh, and not just communication satellites, but also war satellites, you know, war satellites. OK. All right. And so basically, yeah, Esau, you put you built all of these weapons, your, your Star Wars program to go to war with your how about shit, how was shy, man. But you're going to lose this war. OK, so it says. uh and Obadiah 1 and 4, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, which America's symbol is the eagle, okay? And though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith Yahweh, Bashin Yahweh Shai. You know, and that's what the Lord's going to bring you down. So, reading Revelation 12 and 7, it says, And there was a war, there was war in heaven. Michael and his archangels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Okay, so when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai comes to fight to do this battle with Esau, because this is going to be the, the, the greatest battle of all time, man. But it's not going to be because Esau is in his military might, it's going to be because of Yahweh Shai and his military and spiritual might. Okay, so this is Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 5. It says, After this, I beheld and lo. There was gathered together a multitude of men out of the number from the four winds of the heavens, which that's NATO. Those are all the NATO troops from all the different nations, man, starting chiefly here in America to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And that man that came out of the sea is Yahweh Shai. And it says, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. This is a chariot. But I would have seen the region of or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. So all these nations, when they see the power of Yahweh Shai, when they literally see Yahweh Shai standing on top of the chariot, they're going to be scared to fight, man. But they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna fight. The Lord going to put it in their spirit to fight. And he says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet durst fight. 
And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor swore, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, which those are concentrated laser beams, man. Concentrated laser beams out of those chariots, man. Okay? And out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they, and they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burnt them up every one so that upon of a sudden of the innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived but only dust and the smell of smoke when i saw this i was afraid and so esau you got your weapons that your space wars that you can that you you know because esau his next frontier is space man but he's already charted that when you had Reagan speaking about the Star Wars program in the 80s, okay? You had 1969 uh, NASA space program where they set up a, 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 a false flag going to the moon, which they never went past the Van Allen belt. But they're preparing for war. For who? For Yahweh Shai, man. They'll say, oh, an alien invasion. Or or, or, or they'll say, uh, uh, you know, um, to protect from cyber wars. But it's really to protect against uh, the heavenly host, man. Starting off with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But they're not going to be able to fight this war. They're going to fight, but they're not going to win. You know, they're going to participate, but they're going to lose. All right? So I just wanted to do a quick video on this. It says the U.S. military prepares for the next frontier space war. You know? And hey, man, we're almost at that time, man. We're almost at that time where Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is going to lead, uh, is going to use uh, 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 this man's military against himself, man. So it says, uh, let me see this real quick. It says, so many took notice in April this year, work vowed that the U.S. would strike back if attacked in space. Strike back, he added, and knocked them out, which that's his pride. That's his pride. Going back to Obadiah uh, real quick. Or uh, Obadiah 183, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. You you hear that? This is pride right here. Where it says, uh where it says, uh let me start up. It says he was proven right when months later US space forces were overwhelmed and a mock attack on a US military satellites. So many took notice when in April this year, work vowed that the US would strike back. If attacked in space, strike back, he added, and knock them out. Well, that's your pride deceiving you, Esau. That's your pride deceiving you, man. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cluster of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Well, the who that's going to bring you down to the ground is Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You're not going to win this fight, Esau. So with that, I want to give all praises and honor and glory. To Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone for teaching his word and truth and sincerity. Salutation to my fellow Akim, the hopeful elect, the elect pushing his word. Keep pushing. We're almost out of here. Shalom.